Good evening, George Mason, and welcome to this week's broadcast of Mason Cable News. I'm Ariel Thornhill. And I'm Kylan Adams. Colin, how's your week going so far? My week is going pretty well. I'm really excited. Two more weeks, and I'm out of here. Yes, very excited. It's HIV Awareness Week. Today's event includes Wellness Wednesday from 12 to 2 p.m. at the JC Kiosk B and HIV AIDS Game Show at 4.30 in the JC Gold Room. Also, all week long, WAVES is offering free HIV testing in Sub 1. Check out waves.gmu.edu for more info. The Office of Student Media is hosting a week-long celebration of our namesake's George Mason legacy and ideas. Happy Birthday, George will take place the week of December 7th through the 11th. On Monday, December 7th, we'll be having a free admitment panel discussion moderated by Provost Peter Stearns from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. in the JC Cinema. Tuesday, December 8th, there will be a WGMU Radiothon, a full day of George Mason themed programming in the radio studio from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can listen online at www.wgmuradio.com. Wednesday, December 9th, there will be a Freedom Kiosk hosted by Forfer State and the Society of Professional Journalists from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. On Thursday, December 10th, there will be an open mic night where you can share your special talent with the Mason community from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. in the JC Bistro. Friday the 11th, there will be a celebration in honor of George Mason legacies and ideas for his 200th and 90th birthday badge. It will be held in the Hub Corner Pocket from 12 p.m. to 2 o'clock p.m. Light up your holidays. Experience the magic of the Smithsonian's National Zoo lit up by over half a million twinkling, sculpting, and dancing lights. Plunge down snowless tubing tracks while intake a whirl on the Speedwell Foundation Conservation Carousel. Ride the National Zoo Choo Choo, enjoy hot cocoa and cider, and stop by the Visitor Center to see our famous gingerbread contest. Admission is free and the event runs every night from 5 to 9 p.m. until January 2nd, with the exception of December 24th, 25th, and 31st. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Welcome back. On Friday, November 27th, in Colorado Springs, there was a shootout with a gunman inside of a Planned Parenthood facility. Robert Lewis Deere has been accused of first-degree murder after the killing of two civilians and one police officer. Also, nine people were wounded in the rampage, and both Planned Parenthood's leadership and conservative presidential candidate Mike Huckabee called this an act of terrorism. He made his first appearance in court this past Monday wearing a padded vest. Earlier today, there was a report of a 20-victim shooting incident in San Bernardino, California around 11.15 a.m. This was held on Waterman Avenue at the Inland Regional Center, which is a social services center used by those with a mild severe autism. Our sources say that at least 12 people were confirmed dead and that the attack involved one to three shooters. As of now, there is no further information. Here's Kira White with Freshman's Corner. Hello, Mason Patriots. Welcome to another segment of Freshman's Corner. I'm your host, Kira White. I hope you guys had an awesome Thanksgiving break because now we are back and hopefully we are ready for those finals coming up. Well, if not, here are some few study tips from your peers of Mason 2019. So, um, I would say that I'm not ready for my chem final, but I plan on studying for it soon. I plan on outlining the chapters and getting help from friends. Um, I don't know if this is going to work for everybody, but I study well on my bed, so I get nice and cozy, so I feel good about myself. And just no music, lock the door, phone on silent, and just really like think to myself, okay, until I know this material, I can't access my phone. So I do that a lot, and it's actually really helpful because I get distracted easily. So My other finals? are just essays and I'm totally fine with that. And my Spanish final is gonna be simple, so I'm not really worried about that. Um, usually I study in Hanover with my friends, like every night during the week, and sometimes over the weekends if I feel like it. Um, that's about it, actually. Well, that's it for this segment of Fresh Prince Corner. I hope you guys do an awesome job on those finals, and please study hard. I am your host, Kira White. See you next time.
Welcome back to Mason Cable News. The holiday season is filled with family and friends. However, it is also a time of overeating and excessive weight gain. Here are a few tips you can stay healthy through the holiday season. Number one, portion control. Use a smaller plate when eating. Number two, don't starve yourself beforehand. The hungrier you are, the less self-control you have. Number three, eat slowly. Number four, skip, li skip liquid calories and drink water. And finally, number five, make exercising a top priority during the winter break. Here is Cindy Peterson with your sports report. Hello, Mason. Welcome back this week to your Mason Sports Report. I'm your host, Sydney Peterson. With the semester coming close to an end, most of our sports teams are as well. Except both our men and women's basketball team are in full force action for the season. The men's team just had their first home game victory of the season on Saturday against Wright State. Mason defeated the team with the final score of 66 to 39. Two players scored in the double digits. Marquise Moore scored a total of 12 points and Otis Livingston scored a total of 14. Today, the men are in Maryland to take on Towson University. We will have the results for this game at next week's newscast. For sooner results, please visit GoMason.com. The women's team is also playing this evening, but they are having a home game against Georgetown University. This is a nice change for our women's team as their last five games have been on the West Coast. The women's team currently has a season record of 3-5. to five. Tonight's game is the game of the week. If students show their Mason ID in the arena, they will receive free Dippin' Dots. After more than 20 years and five NBA championships with the Los Angeles Lakers, Kobe Bryant announced this past Sunday that he will be retiring from basketball after this season. In an open letter entitled Dear Basketball, the 37-year-old speaks in first person to the sport. Kobe states it gave a six-year-old boy his Laker dream, and I'll always love you for it. Kobe will truly be missed amongst millions of fans he has gained over the years. Uh, next up, we will show you uh, some opinions of Mason students about how they feel about Kobe's retirement. I personally cannot believe he'll be retiring and I know he will truly be missed. Well, Mason, this is all I have for you this week. We wish both of our basketball teams good luck this evening. Thank you and I'll see you next time. Mason Nation, how was your weekend? More importantly, how was your Thanksgiving? I hope it was a very well rested one. I hope you ate a lot of turkey and you got super stuffed. But we're right back here on the couch this week. And once again, I am excited to be your source for entertainment news nationally as well as in the DMV area. So, kicking off our very first entertainment news story of the week music is an essential part of any Celtic Christmas celebration and this performance is no exception. On Saturday, December 6th at 4 p.m., the Center for the Arts Concert Hall presents Danu, a Christmas gathering called Feliz Nanolage. This authentic Irish band offers up a festive concert of high-spirited Celtic holiday songs, which I think we'll definitely enjoy. Along with its fair share of storytelling, it is another longtime Irish tradition. Hailing from the historic County Waterford, the new standing room only concerts throughout the band's native land are famous and renowned for a vibrant energy and a glorious mix of ancient Irish spirit, music, and popular contemporary music as well. Loyal fans around the world enjoy the virtuosity of the ensemble performing so many traditional Celtic instruments such as the fiddle, the tin whistle, the flute, the button accordion, percussion, and bazooki. The amazing instrumentalists combine efforts with captivating vocalists and top-notch Celtic dancers. 
Well, we are thrilled to welcome back these award-winning artists for an amazing performance and heartwarming holiday performance here at George Mason. Tickets are $54, $46, $32, but like I always say, one free student ticket is available with a valid Mason ID. Oh, and if you're interested in learning more about the Irish Music Group, there will be a post-performance discussion on Sunday, December 6th. You don't want to miss it. And coming up to the Eagle Bank Arena, coming to the Eagle Bank Arena on Friday, December 4th at 7.30 p.m., fans can expect a high-octane set as country music stars Brett Eldridge and Thomas Rhett both have a lot to celebrate. CMTN Tour is the first headlining tour for Eldris and Thomas Rhett, and the pair are coming together and currently dominate two of the coveted top, top 10 spots on the country music charts. When announcing the tour dates on October 31st, CMT's Senior Vice President of Music, Leslie Fram, said this, and I quote, Thomas Rhett and Brett are well on their way to becoming the superstars of our format as they both celebrate back-to-back -back number one singles, we're beyond excited to have them co-headline the CMT tour this year." End quote. So remember to buy your tickets as soon as possible as they are selling out super fast and super quickly. And also remember Danielle Bradbury, season four winner of The Voice, will be the special guest during CMT on tour with Brett Eldridge and Thomas Rhett for their tour titled Suits and Boots. Tickets are going from $25 to almost $180, but general admission pit is on the front of the floor and reserved seats are behind the pit. Remember, you must have general admission ticket to access the pit, so keep that in mind. And lastly, everyone aged two and older must have a ticket. So, well, I hope you come and get those. Last but definitely not least, you know I can't end my favorite infotainment report without a little scoop into the juicy things that are going on in technology land. So here we go. If you believe the rumors that I'm about to tell you, your next iPhone might come without a headphone jack. First, there's this basic fact of life. The current iPhone 6S is 7.1 millimeters thick. So if Apple wants to slim down the iPhone 7, it has to do it around the iPhone jack. How weird is that? Japanese Apple blog Makatakura, citing a reliable source, as they say, reported that the iPhone 7 will be too thin to include a headphone jack, and that is a standard 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Instead, iPhone 7 customers will need to use Bluetooth headphones or buy an adapter that plugs into the lightning port. The diameter and length of current 3.5 millimeters audio connectors are limiting factors in making such devices easily acceptable and smaller and thinner. The company wrote this in its patent. And last year, Apple actually released specifications for manufacturers to make headphones that, you know, connect directly to the iPhone's lightning port, which is completely unreasonable to think. And I'm not even sure if I want to get this new iPhone 7 just because I kind of like wearing headphones, get to distract me from the world going on around me. Don't you agree? Well, Mason, this has been a great week full of infotainment and make sure to watch next week and see me right here on the couch. I hope you have a great weekend, a safe weekend, and remember, start studying for those finals. Having some trouble trying to figure out what to get your parents for the holidays? Struggling with that college student budget? Well, here are some gifts that your parents will love without hurting your pockets. A weekend of free babysitting. Offer to take care of your younger siblings over the weekend so your parents can go on a romantic getaway. A personal scrapbook. You can put together creative works with pictures, painting, music, and more or a passage of time picture. Take a picture of yourself in a college and as a little kid side by side. A day off from cooking dinner. So that way your parents can take a break and you can test out your skills in the kitchen. So what do you guys think of those ideas? 
I think they're great, but I think my mother would still expect for Victoria's Secret lotion that she gets every year. <laughs> oh, some great ideas. Yeah, they're, they're good ideas, you know. You know, I, I love the passage of time thing. That's mm -hmm. so cute. We can do, like, you know, the little kindergarten picture and then the I'm a college student picture. I thought, yeah, that would probably scare me and my parents to see how much I've changed over time. I think we all have. <laughs> Well, our time here at the news desk is coming to a close, but we thank you for watching. Be sure to stay tuned to watch Noticiero GMU with Ismar Ventura, where he will give you the top five news stories in Spanish. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Mason Cable News, and subscribe to our channel on YouTube at Mason Cable Network to keep up with the latest news. I'm Sydney Peterson. I'm Ariel Thornhill. And I am Kylan Adams. Until next time, Mason. Hola, ¿qué tal? Bienvenidos una vez más a Noticiero GMU. Les saluda Ismar Ventura. Espero que todos hayan disfrutado de las vacaciones de Día de Acción de Gracias. Empezamos con lo que la institución está haciendo para desarrollar nuestros logros, especialmente los logros estudiantiles. A partir de hoy podrás ver los cambios en la forma que la Oficina de Comunicaciones Estratégicas, cual ofrece noticias sobre personal docente y administrativo, está cambiando. También están encargados de investigación y otros eventos importantes en la universidad. Compartir el éxito de George Mason es uno de los valores fundamentales de la institución y el sitio web rediseñado hace que sea aún más fácil, más que nunca, compartir historias que celebren nuestros logros. La nueva página web también permitirá que la comunidad universitaria se mantenga y esté siempre al día, al tanto de todas las prioridades estratégicas de la universidad. La institución tiene fe en que estas nuevas herramientas les den aún más razones para estar tan orgullosos de lo que está pasando aquí en nuestra universidad, George Mason. Seguimos con lo que los dos estudiantes y un profesor de la universidad, quienes este pasado verano hicieron algo extraordinario para salvar a un sitio antiguo en el país de Nicaragua. Brian Dalton, estudiante junior de mayor de arqueología, Jack Bolger, estudiante de cine y video principal, y Justin Lurie, profesor de antropología, son los tra que trabajaron en este proyecto junto a una escuela de campo de arqueología en Nicaragua. El proyecto se programó para llevarse a cabo en el verano del 2015. La idea detrás del proyecto es para poder guardar un sitio arqueológico en el Museo de Acajualinca, de, al, en el borde de la destrucción. También para descubrir evidencia de las rutas comerciales de larga distancia desde la Baja Centroamericana y el posiblemente Americana del Sur en México, donde los pueblos antiguos podrían haber participado en los comercios de los históricos mayas. Y en otras noticias, Mason busca fondos para reconstruir el salón de clase Robinson. Como todos los conocemos, el salón de clase Robinson es uno de los más viejos edificios aquí en la universidad. Miembros de la Cámara de Delegados de Virginia y el personal del Comité de Finanzas se encontraban apretados en los escritorios estilo de secundaria durante una reunión aquí en la universidad en el pasado martes. Ellos experimentaron las limitaciones del edificio en donde el 30% de todas las clases tienen lugar. El vicepresidente de la universidad también explicó que el edificio tiene tecnología limitada y no posee luz natural y adecuada. La universidad busca derribar el edificio y reconstruir uno que sea de mayor densidad. Este proyecto está evaluado en unos 112 millones de dólares, el cual servirá a los estudiantes y profesores de la mayor universidad pública en la investigación del estado. Esperemos que este proyecto sea todo un éxito para nuestra comunidad. Además, en un nuevo programa que fomenta la investigación entre los estudiantes biológicos Smithsonian aquí en la universidad. Estudiantes de Mason que están estudiando biología tienen la oportunidad de internar con la organización Smithsonian a partir de este enero del 2016. El semestre está titulado Investigaciones de Smithsonian. 
Estas oportunidades de internos se estarán llevando a cabo en la Escuela de Conservación, en el Instituto Smithsonian de Biología de la Conservación en Front Royal, Virginia. Y seguimos con estudiantes de la universidad que organizaron la Vigilia de Reflexión y Curación. La comunidad de George Mason se reunió, se reunió en la Plaza Norte la semana pasada para reflexionar y tratar de procesar los recientemente acontecimientos en los Estados Unidos y alrededor del mundo. Los estudiantes se inspiraron en un poema de Warson Comarca que ya lidiaron con los eventos de la Universidad de Missouri y otros campus universitarios. Así como los ataques terroristas en Beirut y París, dijo Lisa Snyder, directora asociada de la oficina LEAD aquí en la universidad. Realmente quería probar y hacer algo que podría permitir a la gente venir a reflexionar e inspirar esperanza, añadió Snyder. Esperamos que todos estos acontecimientos cesen de una vez y por todas y que dejen de cobrarle la vida a tantas personas inocentes. Y para cerrar esta edición de noticiero, hoy, hoy mismo, es Día Mundial del SIDA, cual se celebra cada primero de diciembre de cada año. Y es una oportunidad para que la gente de todo el mundo se una a la lucha contra el VIH, mostrar su apoyo a las personas que viven con, la, con el virus y para conmemorar las personas que han muerto y han perdido su vida por causa de esta enfermedad. El Día Mundial del SIDA fue el primer día de la salud mundial de la historia que se celebró por primera vez desde 1988. Así nos despedimos, patrióticos. Los esperamos la próxima semana con sus noticias en español. Gracias por acompañarnos, como siempre, para Noticiero GMU. Reportó Ismar Ventura. Hasta la próxima, George Mason.